Sam Cooke's journey to becoming a legend in both music and social activism began in the most unexpected of places, a small church in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Born into a deeply religious family, the young Cook was first introduced to the power of song through gospel music, performing with his siblings in his father's church. But as his smooth tenor voice began to echo beyond the church walls, it became clear that Cook's destiny reached far beyond the confines of gospel. By the time he took the helm of the Soul Stirrers in 1950, his name had already begun to spread like wildfire. Cook's ability to captivate audiences with his voice was undeniable, but it was his ambition that set him apart. Gospel alone wasn't enough for him. He wanted more and he was willing to break barriers to get it. The tension between staying true to his gospel roots and crossing over into the secular world of popular music wasn't just a career choice. It was a risk, one that would forever change the trajectory of American music. But Cook's rise to fame wasn't without its struggles, both personal and professional. Little did the world know behind the hits that dominated the charts, a storm was brewing. One that would lead to a shocking and mysterious end. Hey everyone, welcome back to Compelling History. Today we're diving into the life of one of music's most influential legends, Sam Cooke. From his groundbreaking hits to his powerful role in the civil rights movement, Cooke's legacy is nothing short of remarkable. But before we get started, if you're enjoying this series, please give this video a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Also, check out our previous series on historical monuments or key inflection points that shaped history. We have plenty more content you'll love. Now let's jump into today's video and explore the extraordinary story of Sam Cooke. Samuel Sam Cooke was born on January 22, 1931 in Clarksdale, Mississippi, the fifth of eight children in a deeply religious household. His father, Reverend Charles Cooke, was a Baptist minister in the Church of Christ, Holiness, and his mother, Annie May, was a strong matriarchal figure. Faith and music were inseparable in young Sam's life, deeply rooted in his upbringing. By the age of six, Sam was already performing in his father's church alongside his siblings in a gospel group known as the Singing Children, offering an early glimpse into the star Cook would later become. In 1933, when Cook was just two years old, the family moved to Chicago, seeking better opportunities in the northern industrial city, a migration familiar to many African-American families at the time. While Chicago offered new possibilities, it was also a city marked by racial segregation, an experience that would later fuel Cook's commitment to social justice. Despite these challenges, his passion for music flourished. He attended Doolittle Elementary and later Wendell Phillips Academy High School, the same school Nat King Cole had attended a few years earlier. At Wendell Phillips, Cook honed his vocal skills, already dreaming of musical success. By the age of 14, Cook had begun to make a name for himself, joining the prestigious gospel group The Highway QCs. This step marked a significant turning point in his early career, as his voice captivated audiences, solidifying his place in the gospel community. In 1950, at the age of 19, Cook replaced R.H. Harris as the lead singer of the Soul Stirrers, one of the most revered gospel groups in the country. His smooth, emotive voice brought fresh energy to the group, and under his leadership, they achieved new heights of popularity, especially among younger listeners. His first recording with the group, Jesus Gave Me Water, showcased his ability to connect deeply with audiences. Other popular gospel songs followed, including Peace in the Valley and How Far Am I From Canaan. Cook's role in bringing gospel music to a younger crowd, especially teenage girls, was revolutionary at the time. Despite his growing success in gospel, Cook grappled with the tension between secular and sacred music as he began to consider broadening his horizons. The religious community, where he had developed his voice, was skeptical when he started transitioning from gospel to secular music, a move many viewed as controversial. Yet Cook believed his music had the potential to transcend the church, reaching broader audiences. This determination to push boundaries rooted in his strong gospel foundation would later be instrumental in his pioneering role in the mainstream music industry. By the time Cook began contemplating a career beyond gospel, he had already proven himself as a talented performer and songwriter. These formative years laid the groundwork for his eventual rise to stardom in the secular music world, where he would become a leading figure in the soul genre, leaving an indelible mark on American music history. Sam Cooke's early success in the music industry was groundbreaking. Born in the gospel tradition, his smooth, versatile voice caught the attention of record labels in the 1950s, allowing him to make an unprecedented crossover into popular music. His ability to shift from the sacred sounds of the soul stirrers to the more secular melodies of pop and R&B set him apart from many of his peers. 
At a time when African-American artists struggled for mainstream recognition, Cook's sound bridged the gap between black gospel roots and white-dominated pop charts, creating a unique appeal to both audiences. One of the defining moments in his early career came in 1957 with the release of his hit single, You Send Me. The song topped both the R&B and pop charts, marking Cook as a trailblazer in a period when crossover success for black artists was rare. His velvety tenor and effortless delivery brought a fresh elegance to the genre. And it wasn't just his voice that captivated listeners. It was the way he made every lyric feel intimate and relatable. This ability to connect on a deeply emotional level would remain one of Cook's trademarks throughout his career. By January 1960, Cook's success soared to new heights after signing with RCA Victor, securing a $100,000 advance, an enormous sum for any artist at the time. His first hit under RCA was Chain Gang, which climbed to number two on the Billboard pop chart, solidifying his ability to blend catchy hooks with socially conscious themes. This success was followed by a series of chart-topping singles like Cupid, Sad Mood, and Twist in the Night Away. His sound, a sophisticated mix of gospel, rhythm and blues, and a growing soul influence, appealed to a broad audience, and he quickly became a dominant force in the music industry. Cook's success in music empowered him to make significant business moves. In 1961, he founded SAR Records, creating a platform for future stars like Bobby Womack and Johnny Taylor. By doing so, Cook became one of the few black artists to control both his music and his business ventures, helping him navigate an industry notorious for exploiting black talent. Cook's ability to write, produce, and perform his own material also distinguished him from many of his contemporaries. His 1964 album, Ain't That Good News, showcased his full range, with tracks like Bring It On Home To Me and Another Saturday Night cementing his place as a soul icon. His voice, effortlessly powerful yet controlled, gave him the flexibility to move between genres. Cook's vocal style, characterized by his smooth tenor and remarkable pitch, allowed him to maintain the elegance of his gospel roots while incorporating the expression and emotion that defined soul music. Ultimately, Cook's early success was a perfect combination of talent, timing, and keen business instincts. His ability to transcend musical genres and racial boundaries made him one of the most influential figures in American music. His innovative spirit continues to resonate, leaving an indelible mark on artists ranging from Marvin Gaye to Stevie Wonder, ensuring that Sam Cook's legacy endures well beyond his untimely death in 1964. By the late 1950s, Sam Cooke had become a dominant force in the music industry, but his influence extended far beyond his soulful voice and chart-topping hits. While his professional life soared, Cook faced significant personal struggles. As we mentioned earlier, he founded SAR Records in 1961, which allowed him to mentor and produce artists like Bobby Womack and Johnny Taylor. His friendships with musicians such as Lou Rawls and Aretha Franklin also grew during this time, cementing his status as a respected figure in the industry. However, Cook's personal life was filled with turmoil. After his first marriage to Dolores Milligan ended in divorce, tragedy struck when she was killed in a car accident in 1959. That same year, Cook married Barbara Campbell, but their marriage was fraught with difficulties, including infidelity on both sides. Despite these challenges, Cook remained dedicated to his children and extended family, even paying for his first wife's funeral expenses. The couple also faced heartbreak in 1963 when their infant son, Vincent, tragically drowned in the family pool. Cook's personal life was further complicated by scandal, with several paternity suits arising during this time. By the early 1960s, Cook became more involved in the civil rights movement. He formed close bonds with key figures like Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, and Jim Brown, using his platform to push for racial equality. His song, A Change Is Gonna Come, released in 1964, is often regarded as his greatest contribution to the movement. Written after experiencing racial discrimination firsthand, the song became an anthem of hope and resilience for African Americans. Beyond his music, Cook was also vocal about the importance of black ownership in the music industry, a radical stance at the time. Tragically, Sam Cooke's life was cut short on December 11, 1964 at the age of 33, when he was shot and killed by Bertha Franklin, the manager of the Hacienda Motel in Los Angeles. The official account stated that Cook, after an altercation with a woman named Elisa Boyer, broke into Franklin's office demanding to know Boyer's whereabouts. Franklin claimed self-defense, stating that Cook had become violent and forced his way into her office, leading her to shoot him in fear for her safety. 
However, the details surrounding Cook's death have long been the subject of speculation. Some close to Cook, including his family and friends, questioned the official narrative, pointing to inconsistencies in the accounts provided by both Franklin and Boyer. Rumors of a setup related to Cook's rising influence and his outspokenness in the civil rights movement fueled suspicions of foul play. Although a coroner's jury ruled the shooting a justifiable homicide, the unresolved questions have continued to cast a shadow over the events of that night. Though his life was tragically cut short, the questions surrounding his death only further cemented the mystery and influence that surround Cook's enduring legacy. His music, activism, and business acumen left an indelible mark on both the music industry and the fight for civil rights, ensuring that Sam Cook's contributions to American culture remain undeniable. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey through the life of Sam Cooke. We hope his story left you with a deeper appreciation for his groundbreaking contributions to music and civil rights. If you enjoyed this video and want to explore more influential figures, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. You won't want to miss our next video, where we dive into the life of one of the most innovative entrepreneurs in history, Steve Jobs. We'd also love to hear from you. Drop a comment below to let us know what other legends you'd like to see featured in future episodes. Your support makes this channel possible, and we can't wait to keep exploring more incredible stories with you.